room for improvement, right? Always. So Mark Brunel joins us now and today's Monday morning quarterback. Good morning. Good Thanks morning. Thanks for being here. Yes. Boy, it's nice to smile after you turn that off yesterday. Right. Uh, a must-needed win. And uh, listen, the Cincinnati Bengals are not a very good football team, but we don't care. Right. We a win won. is a win. Defense played well. Offense did some really good yeah. things. We got back on track. Much-needed victory. Three and four. Everything is in front of us. Uh, so we'll see, but it was it was good yesterday. Okay, so let's talk about the good first. Yes. You mentioned it, the defense. Of course, those last 20 minutes, that was incredible. One <laughs> and then another, and you're like, really? Did I miss that, or are they doing a replay of the one that I just watched? <laughs> Turnovers come in bunches, because up to yesterday, there was just one. And uh, um, again, Andy Dalton kind of took care of that for us, helped us out a little bit, but the defense was aggressive, opportunistic. There's a big one by Unique and Gakwe that turned into six points. Uh, defense played really well. If the defense will just get the ball, create turnovers, whether they're fumbles or interceptions, the Jaguars are going to win a lot of football games. And then if we could just even it out, so the defense has a great game <laughs> and so does the offense, and that appears to be where we're really struggling yeah, again yesterday. It really is. I think we're seeing Gardner Minshew kind of play more like a rookie. Boy, he just came out of the gate the first five games of the season. He slowed down a little bit, but that's okay. Gardner Minshew has one job with this football team. Do not turn the ball over. If you don't turn the ball over, the chances that are that the Jaguars are going to win. Uh, Leonard Fournette ran the ball well. The receivers stepped up. I mean, all the receivers stepped up for the offense yesterday. So take care of the ball. This football team will be fine. It's interesting, too, because you've wondered in watching kind of the plays that are called. You know, Fournette was kind of go-to certainly yesterday yes. and even the game before. Sometimes it's very productive. Sometimes it's two, three, four yards at a time, which can be frustrating for a fan to, who's watching. It, it but is. is there is there somewhat maybe perhaps of a little bit of a lack of trust in Minshew's ability to throw the ball, and that's why they're really relying on Fournette, or is it just I, I think it changes? So. I, well, I, I think first it goes back to who Doug Marone is. It is a solid defense. Uh, take care of the ball and run the football. Establish the run. Uh, he's an he's an ex offense alignment. That's just in his DNA. He wants to run the football. That combined with the fact that you do have a rookie quarterback that has done some very good things, but I don't think you have you can entirely trust Gardner Minshew yet in all situations. He's still very young, and listen, that that sounds like a bold statement, but he hasn't played a lot of football in the no. NFL. And, but he's done some really good things, but you still have to be cautious with how you, you play Gardner Minshew. Uh, and, but when you can do that with a running back like Leonard Fournette, what I love is John DeFilippo is, is trusting Leonard Fournette to just go out there and do his job. Not every run is pretty. You've got to be patient. You've got to keep at it, keep giving him the ball, because if you do, he's that back that if you give it to him 20 to 25 times, he is going to get the yards, and he's showing that. All right, just one final word on Jalen Ramsey. No, he did give. I no, know. Not, I just have no. to ask. He gave Move the interview on. yesterday. I'm watching it, <laughs> and we all know who he's talking about. At least one of the four people who was in the room. Okay? I know that guy quite well. <laughs> yeah, actually. I know. I think. And and you know, is there any long term impact to the fact that maybe other players who are thinking about coming to Jacksonville might not want to because of this front office and the four people who, you know, made him feel disrespected? I don't think there's no, and I just it's it's unfortunate, and uh, um, and I think it, this has worked out best for for Jalen Ramsey, and it's worked out best for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I do believe down the road that Jalen Ramsey will he'll get his feelings hurt again. Something will be said by the Rams uh, that will upset him, and then he's eventually going to be uh, a problem for the Los Angeles Rams. I really believe that because you know what happens when when you're a player. If you, if you play long enough, you're going to get offended. A coach is going to say something. Uh, whether you're in your contract negotiations, that's not going to go entirely well. Well, how do you react to that? Um, you've got to handle, handle it like a mature individual and say, you know what, uh, I, I've got to move on from this. Or you could, do the, you could do the right thing and say, you know what, let's, let's talk about this. Let's work this out. Let's not get so upset that we want to go play elsewhere. No, it doesn't work Someone that way. Someone said it, it, something, and it hurt my feelings. I mean, we all have bosses, some, right? We <laughs> do have bosses, and sometimes bosses make us angry. <laughs> right. It's part of the deal. You move on. You learn from it, but you handle it like a pro. I just don't think Jalen handled this situation uh, like he should have. And uh, so we, we all go forward. All right, Mark Brunel, all thank right, you thank very you. much. Appreciate it. Rich?